Hello and welcome to News Clip. The recent notification of the Reserve Bank of India about the framework for compromise settlements and technical write off has picked up a storm in the banking industry. Uh, two major unions, the All India Bank Officers Confederation and the All India Bank Employees Association, as opposed to MOVE, which they claim to be in favor of the de full defaulters and the fraudsters. To discuss more about this, we have with us Mr. Thomas Franco, the former General Secretary of the All India Bank Officers Confederation. Welcome, sir. So, to begin with, the circular has kicked up a storm, and both the AIBA and IBOC has opposed this. So, in what context are these two organizations opposing this, given the increasing list of defaulters and fraud fraudsters in the public sector banks? Well, it's not only the All India Bank Officers Confederation and All India Bank Employees Association. Bank Employees Federation of India has also opposed this move. And a uh, number of economists have raised their voices. The People's Commission on Public Sector and Public Services has also returned to the uh, Reserve Bank Governor, asking him to withdraw the circular immediately. There are few members of Parliament also have already raised this issue. Uh, the Congress representative, uh, Jairam Ramesh, has also asked that this should be withdrawn. Jawar Sarkar from Ternamul Congress has written that it should be withdrawn. So, uh, there is uh, an overwhelming uh, opposition to this move for the following reasons. Number one, all along, the willful defaulters as well as the fraudsters had been categorized separately. A defaulter who is finding it difficult to repay the loan because of the certain circumstances in the business or in the family, he has to be treated differently from a willful defaulter who is one who has the money to pay, but he is refusing to pay. Similarly, a fraudster is one who has cheated the bank using false documents, false statements, uh, misusing the money for, the, for a purpose other than for which the loan was given. This all have been listed very clearly in 2003 in an RBI circular itself. And that time, RBI had clearly stated that these people should not be uh, permitted to have any access to the banking system in any other banks also. Now banks are more interconnected. But even in 2003, they had said that once a willful defaulter or a a uh, fraudster is committing uh, this kind of mistakes. So they, between the banks, there should be sharing of information so that they don't uh, misuse other banks to get a fresh loan and again go into cheating. Unfortunately, the circular dated 8th June has gone back on everything. It says that the banks can have a compromise with uh, willful defaulters as well as with the fraudsters. This is totally illegal because you are asking to deal with a criminal as he is a good person. In both the cases, these are criminal offenses and banks have been earlier instructed that there should be criminal proceedings initiated against their company as well as personally against them. But now, suddenly they will be asked for compromise settlement and uh, they become good people. And this creates a total uh, lack of faith in the system itself. A person who is honestly repaying a loan, he will now start thinking, why I should pay promptly when somebody who is a cheater is given a compromise? I also have genuine difficulty. Why I cannot be given a compromise settlement? See, lacks of uh, youth who have availed these education loans, they have not got a job or they have got a job which is not paying adequately and they are finding it difficult to repay the loan. We don't give that concession to them. There are crores of farmers when they are affected with certain calamity, maybe flood or drought, who find it difficult to repay the loan, we don't give them a concession. Instead, we put pressure on them to repay the loan and it has led to number of suicides which we are aware. So, the opposition to this circular is quite valid and uh, the Reserve Bank should 
we draw the circular. Otherwise, it is going to create a uh, havoc in the banking system. So the new notification has uh, uh, mandated the approval from the board of directors to arrive at a compromise. So will this uh, play a crucial role in uh, ensuring that uh, these compromises are, you know, I'm, I'm not sure whether this word compromise itself is, uh, you know, fit to be used in these cases. But whether this board of directors will ensure that a large sum of the money is recovered from the defaulters or the fraudsters. See, we should uh, first look at the composition of the boards of the banks. Till 2014, there were representatives from the unions and associations. Legally mandated, there has to be an officer director and an employee director. And they are supposed to be from the majority union represented in that bank. That was doing well because they could also play a watchdog role. When they attend the board meetings, they get all the papers, including large loans granted, large the loans proposed for write-off, all these details that comes to their hand and they immediately quickly look at it and respond. See, they too may not be able to uh, block any decision that easily, but they could always put up a decent note which will uh, shake the management. But today, after 2014, there are no officer director, there are no employee director. 2017, as general secretary, I filed a case in the De Delhi High Court. It is getting dragged even now. The government keeps on asking for extension for the last uh, almost six years. So that is one side in the board. Secondly, the board of directors, the so-called independent directors appointed to the board, they are politically connected. It is the finance ministry who decides who has to be an independent director. And surprisingly, just one week before, the Reserve Bank governor was addressing the board of directors of different banks, where he has said that votes are not functioning properly. There are a lot of uh, greening of the balance sheet. And the deputy governor of Reserve Bank of India was saying that you are not do doing your role. And uh, it is high time that you tighten your belt and uh, see that uh, banks are uh, taking the right decisions and votes are meant to take uh, uh, very right decisions in the national interest. So the votes today are opaque. There is no transparency. You cannot get, it, get any information under the RTA even. And even to the parliament uh, the replies, they say that, no, this is uh, under the Official Secrecy Act, so we will not be able to give. So the board of directors, what now practically will happen is that uh, they will quickly sit around, ask for a list of uh, defaulters for whom compromise proposals are uh, put up, and they will quickly rid off all this note. So you mean to say that we have already seen a lot of frauds in the last uh, five years or a decade. So with the introduction of this compromise uh, formula, these numbers are supposed to grow and uh, uh, we can expect uh, more losses to the public sector uh, banks in the coming years and leading to privatization as well. Exactly. See, the uh, this money is not the government's money. The money belongs to the depositors. Banks have been writing off. In spite of that, they could make profit. But now, there is a very suspicious angle to that I am seeing. In the last uh, eight years, starting from 2016, the government of India introduced the mudra loans. These loans are meant for uh, small enterprises, industry or small trade. And uh, the official figure given in the government of India sites is mind-boggling. In eight years, we have dispersed 42 crores loans 
to yes. individual and the loan outstanding is 24 lakh crores from the beginning we have been saying that uh, well we welcome support to the small enterprises the entrepreneurs have to be given support but let banks do their job which is within their own purview already you didn't require a new scheme to be announced. The banks already had traders loan. They had the self-employment loan. They have the MSME loans. But beyond that, these people announced this Muda loan, which is with a maximum of 10 lakhs to a borrower, where total politicization was taking place. I was leading an agitation in Chennai when I was the IBOC General Secretary, when these loans were dispersed through a central minister in a marriage hall and uh, the ruling party that is BJP functionaries were sitting at the stage. Similar thing was happening across the country and again I had opposed in Tamil Nadu from the IBOC state the committee when there was a arrangement uh, in uh, Chennai city where BJP flags were put up and BJP functionaries were sitting there and branch managers were asked to sit there and uh, collect the loan applications. This is in South. And we also know that there was uh, BJP started one exercise that uh, people can apply for loans through their own website. Now probably it is not functioning or maybe it is functioning also. But in the northern states, when I have inquired with colleagues, it is much more. So total politicization of the scheme was done. And while granting the loan itself, the BJP functionaries were saying that this is what is this gift. So people were not repaying. And as there was no restructuring available after 2012, the banks were finding it difficult to deal with these loans. They were also put on pressure that don't uh, disclose that these accounts have become non-performing assets. Because these loans were personally monitored by the finance minister. He was conducting quarterly meetings with the heads of the banks, giving targets and uh, giving instructions. Now they say that there is no phone banking for us. What is happening is that personally people are called and they are given instruction. So what has happened is that these loans are becoming bad. Now that 2014 election is coming. Before that, these people want these loans to be written off. So banks have found a new way now. They can say that these are uh, willful defaulters. So let us go for a compromise settlement and... Uh, Indirectly, pressure will be put on the banks to do that. And that way, banks as well as non-banking financial companies which have given loans, private banks, they all clean their books. And all these people will get benefited in a beautiful way because now, once they are a non-performing uh, borrower, their name in the civil report, the credit rating, they will be under a very uh, poor score. So once the loan is written off, there everything is clean, so they can go for fresh loan. They'll be eligible to. Yes, yeah, even the circular itself says that after one year you can give fresh loan. But even that they don't have to wait. Once the civil score is clear, they can go to any other bank and keep availing loan. So this is the political purpose. I think uh, this circular has been brought in, so that the banks two ways it. Uh, they are seeing a benefit. One, large number of borrowers who have availed this loan, their loans are written off. So they can be said that, see, Modiji has gifted you, you give us the your vote. Second thing, once the balance sheet of these banks are clean, the profit goes up and uh, people in the private sector will be more happy to take over this bank. And the, when the privatization uh, was on discussion, there had been questions raised. How do we take over these banks when they have a huge non-performing asset? So now it, uh, it will become very clear that uh, all the books of accounts are uh, very clean. 
banks have huge assets, rather undisclosed assets. I'll just tell you one example. Chennai, the Madras main branch of State Bank of India, a heritage building, which will be worth uh, hundreds of crores, huge building. In the book value, it is only one rupee. Because after the uh, depreciation, depreciation. so some figure, so we keep it as one rupee. The yes, real asset will be much more. So these people will be very happy to buy the uh, public sector bank. That also should, uh, I think, is an intention behind this decision. Uh, so generally, the windfall defaulters or the fraudsters abscond from the country, uh, which we have witnessed in the recent years. So uh, that is a total that leads to total loss of the amount which has been uh, disposed by the banks. But will this help in bringing at least some percentage of the money back to the banks? The willful defaulters and fraudsters have cheated the bank. Criminal cases are filed. So if the criminal cases are pursued properly, there is a scope for a better recovery than for a compromise settlement. See, now what will happen? The people, the large uh, defaulters, uh, fraudsters who have run away from the bank, like Vijay Malaya or Mahar Chukshi or Nirav Modi or Jatin Mehta and uh, a host of others, they can come to the country and say that uh, we will pay some amount to close this loan and uh, clean our books. So they can again start the availing fresh loans. In fact, uh, Vijay Malaya once even offered that I will pay the full principal. I cannot pay the interest. Banks refused because he was already classified as a willful defaulter and a fraud. But now he can do that. Same thing the person who cheated the uh, Punjab National Bank, Mahar Chokshi and Niramuti, they can do that. Jatin Mehta, who is, uh, whose family is now closely connected to the Adani, living happily abroad. He can also come back. And they will be supporting the ruling party in the election in different ways. Electoral bonds, or there are many other ways in which they can. My question is that, uh, see, just to recover a small amount, should we spoil the system as a whole? And should we go for a compromise with fraudsters and willful defaulters who are really criminals? So this is an aspect. Yeah. So in short, this is you know legalizing the fraudulent activities of the uh, big corporates who have already had track record of uh, such activities. Yes. One side you are helping the large corporates. Another side you are also trying to clean the books by writing off the other loans, uh, which was uh, stopped after 2012. All these. Uh, uh, restructuring of loans, compromises, all that was uh, stopped during 2012, saying that this is going to affect the banking system very badly. And Raghuram Rajan's period, they, he put off that, uh, all that was uh, blocked. Now they are opening up one by one. There are different routes like NCLT and now the compromise proposals so that everything can be written off at the cost of the banks and at the cost of the depositors' money. And it is mostly the deposits okay. with the banks are the small depositors. Tomorrow it can lead to a collapse of the banking system itself. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Thank you.